It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. Larry Lasseur and John B. Oates from the editorial board of the New York Times. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Chauncey W. Reed, United States Representative from Illinois. Seems fitting, doesn't it, that one of the longtime representatives of the state of Illinois in Congress should also be one of the foremost congressional experts on the man from Springfield, Illinois, Abraham Lincoln. Representative Reed, do you agree that during Lincoln's presidency, things were tougher than they are now for Eisenhower and his presidency? Undoubtedly. The country was torn in a civil war, which of course is really uh, worse than any other kind of a war, foreign war. And Lincoln had problems that no other president has ever had to contend with. Well, but do you, think, do you think the country is much more homogeneous now than ever oh, was? Oh, yes. Do you think that he had as much trouble with the Republican Party in his day as President Eisenhower is having today? I think he had more trouble, yes. Uh, did you, as a conservative Republican, feel that uh, Lincoln was uh, radical in his, some of his views? No, uh, I think he was rather conservative in his views. He, he uh, didn't uh, believe in, uh, the, in uh, amending the Constitution any more than was absolutely necessary. He, uh, of course, he, he took the radical, what it was called then the radical view, in that he was uh, for freeing the slaves, uh, which was then considered the radical view, but uh, it afterwards turned out that it was not so radical. Well, he also thought, I believe, that the Mexican War was was wrong, didn't he? And yes, Slavery when he served in wrong. Congress, he was against the Mexican War. That was under President Polk. And after the, uh, he had voted against the, the entering into the war, but after the war had been voted, he then voted for every appropriation to carry it to a successful conclusion. What about Lincoln's record in Congress, Representative Reed? He was a member of the House of Representatives in, was it 1847, 46, 47? 1847 and 48. What was his voting record like then? Did he support the party? Yes, he, he was the only Whig that was elected from Illinois that year. There were seven in the, in the House and he was the only Whig. The others were all Democrats. But he, he supported President Polk, who was a Democrat, in the conduct of the war. And he voted the Whig line pretty much uh, in its entirety. You say he was a strong party man then, and, and moderate, or? Uh, yes, he was a moderate. Or, or a left-wing Republican? No, he, of course there weren't any Republicans then, no. there, he was a Whig. Well, if he were alive today, uh, do you think he would have been a Republican? I think undoubtedly he Why? would. Why? Well, I think that he would have uh, he would have espoused all of the uh, all of the things that the Republican stands for now, Republican Party stands for now. What about the Senate? He never quite made that, did he? No, he ran for it twice, and the first time that he ran for it, he could see that if the legislature cast any votes for him, that they would probably defeat. Judge Trumbull, who was then a senator. And so he pulled out of the race and let uh, Trumbull be elected. The second time was when he ran against Douglas. And he received the popular vote at that time, but the state was not uh, divided or apportioned evenly. And uh, Douglas received the majority of the members of the legislature. And of course the Senate had one half of their membership but didn't run for re-election. Of course, they were holdovers. And that together gave Douglas the majority. You were, we were talking before about his term in the House of Representatives. Well, what uh, sort of pay did uh, Abraham Lincoln get in those days, Representative he got Reed? A, he got eight, thou, eight dollars per day. Well, incidentally, you're asking uh, for a little more now, aren't you, as the ranking yes, member of the Judiciary more. Committee? 
What's yes, that going to be like? That will uh, raise our pay from uh, 12500 per year to 22500 Well, do you consider that to be inflation or the, the value of a representative now? I think it's the value of a representative. I think uh, they haven't been raised for many years, and the uh, work of a representative is much greater than it has been. The sessions of Congress are much longer. And those who have professions or businesses and who formerly could go and make a little money at their various professions and businesses can't do it now. Uh, Mr. Reed, you uh, spoke of Lincoln's difficulties with his own party and uh, his problems as president. Uh, do you uh, feel that the party nowadays is in any danger of dissolution or splitting? I, d I do not think so, no. Uh, do, you, do you feel that there is a right wing, left wing split within the party at all? There is a certain, certainly division. There is a division. It's not a very uh, marked division of the, you might say, the die-hard uh, conservatives and the... Uh, very uh, strong liberals, but the division is not uh, not very marked, and many of the conservatives are taking the liberal point of view now, and some of the uh, those who have been very liberal are being a little bit more conservative. I think we're molding the thing you together. You include yourself among the conservatives who are taking I, the liberal point of view? Yes, I think I am. What about the political attacks that uh, Lincoln faced in his day, Representative Reed, do you think they were more bitter than they are now, or are things about us about the same? Well, I think they were more bitter. The uh, cartooning was very marked in those days, and uh, uh, the, the candidates were rather bitter in their campaigns, I think more so than they are today. Lincoln always seemed to uh, of the theory, didn't he, that, uh, like Harry Truman, that if you couldn't stand the heat of the kitchen, you'd better get out of it. But he always liked to lighten things with a laugh, didn't he? Could yes. Think of some of he, his anecdotes? He could, uh, he could uh, get uh, warring factions and bring them, they'd come over to the White House to see him, and they'd have blood in their eyes, and Lincoln was able to tell them an apt story, and they'd go away laughing, although some of them didn't like it. I recall that he was asked what he felt, how he felt it was like to be president when he said it was like being ridden out of town on a rail, that if it weren't for the honor, he'd prefer to walk. Yes. Well, well, Repres Representative Reed, uh, what about yourself as the ranking member of the uh, House Judiciary Committee now? Aren't you uh, backing a bill that would reduce income taxes to some that's, extent? That's correct. The bill would uh, limit income taxes to 25 percent and uh, would do away with inheritance taxes. They would go back to the states. The 25 percent could be raised to 40 percent by the Congress if three-fourths of the members of both houses voted in favor of it, and if, in case of a national emergency or a war, they could raise the limit entirely. Well, now, it's been estimated that that would cost the Treasury about $13 billion, uh, Representative Reed. Uh, I imagine that you're a believer in a balanced budget. How do you oh, make yes. up the difference? Well, we, we have an idea that uh, with the uh, income tax raised or lowered, that the Congress will have to lower its expenditures because it won't... Well, now, you, for instance, have been opposed to foreign aid on any sizable scale at all. Yeah. Would you uh, take that as one of the yeah, areas of cutting expenditures? I would. I, I'll uh, take that regardless of whether the income tax amendment goes through or not. Representative Reed, would your uh, income tax amendment be a 25% a, a income tax on everybody's income? Yes. Or well, is it, it that this figure must not be exceeded? It, it will not exceed that. No, it can't go above that. Uh, you, as a real admirer of Lincoln, of course, would recognize that he was a strong president, wouldn't you, Representative yes. Reed? How do you think he would have uh, felt about the Bricker Amendment as an example of a limitation on the power of the presidency? I would have no idea. 
how he would have felt about that. That's a problem that you, your committee, may have to handle. Yes, we may have to handle it. It's a, it's an amendment, and all amendments come to our committee. Yeah. Well, uh, Representative Reed, do you think that the fact that Eisenhower has gone to the uh, Congress to ask for authority to uh, prosecute the Formosa War means that the Bricker Amendment has been met and uh, challenged and done away with? No. No, that. Uh that uh, was merely, he would not have had to come to Congress at all if he didn't choose to do so, but he, he preferred to have the backing of Congress in any act that he may take to preserve the uh, situation as it now exists in Formosa. Well, do you think that was a political stroke by, the, by President Eisenhower, or was that actually a move to... Uh, make the country homogeneous behind him? I think that was, the latter is the correct. And you think that the Bricker Amendment will still come up in, uh, in, the next, in this term? Well, I'm sure it will come up. I don't know how far it'll get. Uh, I understand that Senator Bricker has uh, amended it in some respects, and perhaps done away with the objections to the, that the President had to it. How do you feel about it yourself? Well, I'm rather non-committal on it. I don't know yet how I would be on it. I, Honestly, don't uh, know how I would vote on it. Well, I suppose you used your uh, fondness for Lincoln as a touchstone on many things. I, I do think that there is a room for some sort of an amendment like the Bricker Amendment. I think that there is room for it because uh, I don't think treaty law should uh, supersede the Constitution. Well, thank you very much, Representative Reed. Thank very glad to hear from you tonight. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry LeSeur and John B. Oakes. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Chauncey W. Reed, United States Representative from Illinois. Longines is the world's most honored watch, and by any standard of comparison, Longines is ranked as the highest achievement in modern watchmaking. The greater your discrimination, the greater will be your appreciation of the quality, the beauty, and the unsurpassed performance of a Longines watch. Now here are the facts. Among the finest watches of the world, only Longines has won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, highest honors for accuracy at the great government observatories. And yet, in spite of surpassing quality, you may buy a 14 karat gold Longines watch for about $100 or even less. A gold-filled watch for as little as $71.50. You may choose from the largest variety of styles and types of any watchmaker in the whole world. A quality considered, a Longines watch represents the highest value in all watchmaking. And may we say that if you pay $71.50 or more for a watch, in fairness to yourself, insist on getting a Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, Premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. The Boy Scouts of America deserve our cheers on their 45th anniversary, building for a better tomorrow.